Hello, my name is Paulus Kirchhoff. I'm the director of the Department of Cardiology at the University Heart and Vascular Center UKA Hamburg and a professor of cardiovascular medicine at the University of Birmingham. I would like to tell you about the main findings of the early treatment of atrial fibrillation for stroke prevention trial, East AF4. Atrial fibrillation is a condition that is associated with stroke, cardiovascular death, heart failure, and to some extent acute coronary syndrome. The management of patients with atrial fibrillation has seen marked progress in the last decades with the almost ubiquitous use of anticoagulation that prevents most strokes. In addition, we can render most patients asymptomatic using weight control and we can reduce their cardiovascular risk by giving them risk reduction therapy for hypertension, diabetes, heart failure, etc. Even on optimal current management, 5% of patients with AF per year suffer stroke, cardiovascular death, acute coronary syndrome, or heart failure. And over a five-year time span, between a third and 50% of patients with AF receiving all guideline comfort management options either die or have been admitted to hospital. This is unacceptable. Earlier trials 20 years ago have tested whether rhythm control therapy can improve outcomes. And these trials, for example, affirm and raise have failed to show any benefit of rhythm control. The East AF4 trial tested whether early rhythm control therapy delivered close to the time of first diagnosis and including both antiarrhythmic drugs and catheter ablation can improve outcomes in patients with atrial fibrillation and cardiovascular risk. We enrolled 2,789 patients with recently diagnosed atrial fibrillation, meaning that they had AF first diagnosed less than a year before enrollment and at least two cardiovascular conditions, so approximating a child's last score of two. They were randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion, either to usual care, receiving all guideline conform anticoagulation rate control, etc., or to early rhythm control. Early rhythm control therapy consisted of the same background therapy plus rhythm control therapy at the time of randomization, either by giving antiarrhythmic drugs or by AF ablation. The first primary outcome was a composite of cardiovascular death, stroke, worsening of heart failure or acute coronary syndrome, the latter two measured as hospitalizations. The trial was stopped at the third interim analysis after 75% of the first primary outcome events were accrued due to efficacy. We found that 249 patients randomized to early rhythm control had experienced the first primary outcome event, whilst 316 patients randomized to usual care had experienced the first primary outcome event, corresponding to a hazard reduction of 21% uh, with early rhythm control therapy. So early rhythm control was associated with a 21% reduction in cardiovascular outcomes compared to usual care. A market improvement on top of what we currently do we had a second primary outcome, nights spent in hospital, which is a decent proxy for the cost of treatment to payers. And we did not find a difference in nights spent in hospital between the two treatment arms. This is important because prior studies, including AF, CHF, and the firm, showed that uh, rhythm control therapy was associated with more hospitalizations. The primary safety outcome parameter, a composite of death, stroke, and serious adverse events of rhythm control therapy, was not different between the groups. We found fewer strokes in patients randomized to early rhythm control, um, a numerically lower number of deaths, and a higher um, incidence of serious adverse events related to rhythm control therapy. But overall, these were rare. They occurred in 4.9% of patients randomized to early rhythm control over the five-year follow-up, so approximately 1% per year, and in 1.4% of the patients randomized to usual. Overall, 
the results, in my view, provide a big step forward in uh, the cardiovascular protection that we can offer our patients with atrial fibrillation. Our trial results, while of course they have to be discussed and put in context of existing um, literature, suggest that early initiation of rhythm control therapy in all patients with recently diagnosed atrial fibrillation and cardiovascular risk factors has the potential to improve outcomes compared to our current delayed approach of giving rhythm control therapy only to symptomatic patients. In my view and in the view of the authors and of the trialists in the 135 centers in 11 countries, rhythm control therapy should now be offered to all patients with recently diagnosed atrial fibrillation. 